Hi there, and thanks for your time today. This is Daryl Wilson from Affluence, and I'd like to talk to you about our Affluence Investment Fund. The Affluence Investment Fund is one of two funds that we offer investors, and they both have some, some things in common. Firstly, we try to make sure our interests as a fund manager are aligned with our investors as much as we can, and we do that in two ways. The first dollar that goes into each fund is our own, and Greg Lander and myself, the co-portfolio managers, continue to have a co-investment in the fund alongside our investors. And secondly, we charge no fixed fee for managing the fund, simply a performance fee equal to 12.5% of the positive returns of the fund. Now, both of our funds target both regular income and long-term capital growth. And they do this by investing the money in the fund with a range of underlying fund managers and listed investment companies available in Australia. Affluence Funds Management itself is 100% owned by its directors and staff. And Greg Lander and myself have worked together for more than 15 years. Now the Affluence Investment Fund is designed to be what we call an all-weather fund. And to us, that means it's more suitable for long-term investors, certainly three years and longer. And we're really looking for investors who want a combination of income and long-term capital growth and to have a reasonable return over time. With the fund, we target inflation plus 5% per annum as our long-term goal, which is generally between 7 and 8% per annum. As you'll see, as at the end of May 2020, the fund has a five-star rating from Morningstar. I'd like to start by giving you a snapshot of the fund's returns and compared to the ASX 200, or the index comprised of the largest 200 stocks on the ASX, including dividends. As you'll see over time, the green bar, which is our affluence investment fund, has actually come out on top and it has delivered a better return than the stock market, which is the orange line. And it's done so with significantly less ups and downs along the way. And so if that's important to you, this might be a fund that is interesting. We've certainly had periods when the fund has fallen in value and they generally have coincided with stock market falls, but you'll see that the falls have been less severe uh, the rise is less pronounced, and generally uh, you've seen a more consistent return over time for our affluence investment fund. And that is part of our strategy. And we achieve that generally by investing with a range of underlying fund managers. Today there are over 30 in the portfolio. And a lot of those managers are quite hard to find. Uh, a lot of them are closed to new investors or perhaps are available only to wholesale clients or they might have higher minimum investment amounts. And so you're getting access to a range of managers which would be quite difficult for most people to be able to compile themselves. And I'll talk a little bit more about some of those managers. Now we invest the fund with a range of underlying fund managers, as I said earlier, and there's a few things we look for when we do that. Essentially, we can group those things into two buckets. Firstly, we're looking for the ability to deliver above average returns and hopefully with below average risk. We look at historical performance. We look at the fund strategy. Um, we look at how that particular manager has performed at different times. And we make an estimate as to how we expect that manager might perform in different markets. And that gives us an idea as to where a particular fund or where a particular manager might sit within our broader portfolio. Secondly, we look at a range of more subjective factors and that really revolves around the people, the process and the operations. So that involves looking at the team, how long they've been together, uh, what sort of personalities are involved, we look at the process, whether it's repeatable and whether we can understand what it is the particular manager is doing to deliver above average results or to have the potential to deliver above average results. And then we look at their back office, what they're doing, the support they have, their key service providers, and of course, whether their fees are fair in relation to what they're doing. 
Now, every single investment we make doesn't have to score a pass in every single criteria, but we're, what we're looking for here ultimately is the ability to find managers we trust that we believe have a very good chance of delivering above average returns over a full market cycle. While we focus a lot on diversification in our portfolio, we also acknowledge that markets move in cycles. And so we seek to adjust the portfolio over time as valuations go up and down and as cycles move in order to take advantage of where perhaps the cheaper opportunities might be. So at any given time, we're more likely to be underweight assets and areas we feel are expensive and more likely to be overweight areas we feel are cheaper. That is, we've generally got a bit of a value focus or a value bias in our portfolio. And hopefully if we can do that well over time, uh, we can add value along the way. This will give you a snapshot of the current portfolio. And at the moment there are well over 30 underlying funds invested in a range of different strategies and asset classes. And the goal really here, as I've said earlier, is to have an all weather portfolio that can perform in different market conditions. Whatever we do, we want to be diversified by asset class, investment strategy, investment style, manager and, and, and market. Uh, we want to make sure that the allocations are within our own predefined ranges, and I'll get to that shortly. And importantly, when we're looking at investments, what we're trying to do is not necessarily to forecast the future, but look at what markets are currently valued at compared to long term historical averages. So if the share market today in Australia using uh, ratios like price earnings ratios, earnings growth is perhaps looking cheaper than it has been over the last 20, 50 years, we're more likely to be overweight. If it's looking more expensive than usual, we're more likely to be underweight. This is a broad breakdown of our portfolio at the end of May, and you can see around 8% cash at the end of May. Around 19% of the fund's asset were invested in our LIC fund, and you can find on our website a link to the webinar for the Affluence LIC fund if you're interested in learning more about that. Just under a third was ultimately invested in Australian equities, 13% in global equities, around 10% in property, 5% in resources, and just under 10% in what we call our market neutral and alternatives, which encompasses a range of uh, strategies that aren't necessarily linked to market returns. And finally, a small amount in debt and fixed interest. So as you can see, very diverse, uh, very wide range of different styles and strategies at work there. Now for each of the broad sectors that we invest in, we define ranges and we work within those ranges and this is quite a complicated little graph but just let me talk you through it uh, the gray bars for each asset class show what we call our normal range or where we would expect to be invested as a percentage of the portfolio through a full market cycle so for example for cash you can see that the minimum we might hold is around five percent cash and the maximum around 20 percent the green bar in each uh, different asset class shows you what we might call our neutral range. So if every asset class in the world was, we feel, at fair value today, we might be positioned about where those green lines are. And the black dot shows you where we sit currently within the portfolio. So if the black dot is higher than the green line, that means we're probably overweight and to the other side, we're underweight. So you can see there cash, we're sitting slightly above normal. Our debt and fixed interest allocation is currently very low. Our alternatives is above average, commodities slightly above average, property below average, global equities slightly below average, Australian equities pretty close to average, and our affluence LIC fund above average. That just gives you an idea as to how we're currently positioned. On this slide, you can see our top 10 largest holdings in the fund at 31 mat, and combined they comprise around 47% of the total portfolio. There are over 30 funds within the portfolio, but this just gives you an idea of the breadth of fund managers and different strategies that we have. 
So they include the Affluence LIC fund, which of course invested itself in over 30 different LICs, so you're getting quite a bit of diversity there. We had a long short fund from Bronte, the Bronte Amalthea Fund, which invests in global equities, uh, both long and short. We had a number of funds that invest in ASX listed small caps, and they use various different styles, growth value, deep value, for example. We had a global large cap quality fund in Cooper's Investors Brunswick Fund, and that is predominantly ASX large cap, but there's also some global stocks in there as well. We had the Packer & Co Investigator Trust, which can invest in a very wide range of assets globally, which can include bonds, property and equities, for example. We get quite a bit of our gold exposure through the Baker Steel Gold Fund, which invests in a basket of global gold miners and producers. And we had an ungeared uh, UK fund, the L1 Property Fund, which invests in residential property in the UK. And it specialises in buying lines of apartments at discounts to their value and adding value along the way. See, there's quite a range there within the top 10. If you would like to know more about our portfolio, you can log on to our website, register as an Affluence member, and you can view more of our portfolio and some more of the key metrics. Now we understand that for many of our investors, distributions are important. The Affluence Investment Fund aims to pay distributions monthly and to maintain a minimum distribution amount of 5% per annum. Usually distributions are paid 10 days after the end of each month. And of course, if you prefer to reinvest your distributions and receive more units, that's OK too. Since commencing, the fund has paid cash distributions and they've averaged around 6.3% per annum. And in addition, as with all managed funds, we will pass through any franking credits we receive from our investments through to investors by way of our end of year tax statement. And typically they've averaged around 04 to 0.5% per annum. So the performance numbers you'll see in this presentation and on our website are excluding those franking credits, they're extra. One of the features of the fund that we work hard on is to make sure we try to minimise or to limit the impact of market downturns. And that doesn't mean that the fund's unit price isn't going to fall when markets fall. But what we'd like to do where we can is to make sure that if we're outperforming stock markets, for example, we're doing so more so when they're falling and less so when they're rising. And in fact, one of the features of the Affluence Investment Fund in its five and a half year history has been just that. We've tended to do better than the ASX 200 when it's been falling. We've tended to do worse when the ASX is rising very strongly. And when it's been going up sort of gradually, we've managed to keep up OK. And by doing that, we've managed to deliver a slightly better return than the ASX since we started but we've done so with a lot less bumps and hollows along the way. Now, these are some of the ways we do that. We tilt towards asset classes, as I've said earlier, and investments that are cheaper than average. We prefer lower volatility. And what I mean by that is to say that if we can invest with a manager that has a good return with less ups and downs, we will invest with them. We will prefer that manager over a more volatile manager. We try very hard to diversify the investment styles, even within an asset class as well, to make sure that that helps to lower the volatility. Because we often feel that we can find managers we have a very high conviction will outperform over a full investment cycle, but it's genuinely hard to predict exactly when they will outperform. And all managers have periods where they go better than average and go worse than average. So by holding a whole lot of different styles, we can in some ways negate some of the ups and downs by ensuring that at any given time, some of our managers are doing better than average and that will help make up for any bumps and hollows. We do hold some unlisted assets, for example, some unlisted property funds. They tend to be quite a small part of the portfolio and we will hold those where we feel the long-term returns are going to give us a premium over their listed counterparts. Now, right now, that's not the case, in fact. So, for example, within our property 
allocation, we are much preferring listed property to unlisted property because we can buy listed REITs at the moment at a discount to their underlying value. We do have flexibility in our cash positioning and generally that would tend to hover between 5 and 10% most of the time, but we could go as high as 20% in cash if we felt that valuations were particularly overdone and we were feeling a bit uncomfortable about markets. And finally, we do have the option to use puts or put options uh, to help us to protect against the downside where we feel it's warranted and where we feel it's cost effective. So we certainly don't do that all the time and we would almost never be in a position where the portfolio was fully protected. But again, it's a case of the more we feel valuations are overdone and the more we feel uh, options are cheap, the more likely we are to hold them. Now this is quite a busy slide, but it just gives you some idea as to how, again, the fund has performed in down markets. So the graph here shows the 10 worst months in the ASX 200 since our fund commenced. And there are the grey bars down the bottom, so you'll see straight away the worst month was March 2020 when the ASX 200 fell by 20.7%. The green bars are those same month's results for the affluence investment fund. So again, if you look at March, you will see the fund fell 8.7%, its worst month ever, but in no way as bad as the stock market itself. And if you look at those 10 worst months since the fund commenced, uh, you will see that the fund, our fund has outperformed the stock market in all 10 of those months, delivered positive returns in three of those months. So in total over that time, the stock market fell by 65% in those 10 months, whereas the affluence investment fund fell by only 13%. There's some other statistics there, but generally that goes to the same point, which is that so far at least, um, our fund has performed better than the stock market in down markets. Here's the results since we commenced, and you'll see that even though we've beaten the ASX, uh, we're sitting right on our return objective over the last five and a half years since inception. And it's actually been a very difficult period in which to invest. Over that five and a half year period, the average return from the stock market has actually been just around or just under 5%. So it's been a very difficult period and it's been a, a period of particularly low returns. Uh, we would expect over time that you would get more like a 7 to 8% return from the stock market. Uh, and that would mean that um, that would give us a better result as well. Uh, we have managed to achieve, as I mentioned earlier, that 6.3% per annum distribution rate since commencement compared to our aim of 5% per annum. Uh, we have obviously given new exposure over 30 funds and LICs, and volatility has been significantly lower than the ASX, which goes to that point of having a smoother ride. We also compare our fund to a number of similar funds run by competitors that you might have heard of. And you can see here that over the five and a half year life of the fund, we have significantly outperformed. Uh, in fact, all of our peers, some of the more well-known ones are on the, on the graph there. But in fact, currently uh, the Affluence Investment Fund is number one in its Morningstar category over three and five years. And that's out of around 70 funds in that uh, in that peer group currently. Some of the things we do also differentiate us from those peers, things like the monthly income, uh, our focus on boutique managers that do things differently, the huge style diversification and the performance fee only structure are things that differentiate us from a lot of our peers and we think give us a uh, competitive advantage. So to summarize, Firstly, uh, our interests as manager are aligned with yours as an investor we, and that because we co-invest in the fund and we charge fees based only on performance. In addition, uh, we will close the fund to new investors when we feel we reach investment capacity. That's some way off for us, but um, what that means is we won't take so much money that we feel it's going to impact our performance in any meaningful way. We've now been going five and a half years and we believe the strategy has proven itself to be very valuable. 
um, it's based off a strategy that wealthy family offices and endowment funds use and certainly that's been proven to be a very good long-term investment strategy. We provide access to a range of different investment managers that uh, are very hard to get. In, in a lot of cases, the portfolio managers that we use are close to new investment or have very high initial investment or are only available to wholesale or sophisticated investors. So we are providing through our portfolio access to a lot of managers that would be difficult to get otherwise. Our managers are all generally boutiques um, and they have a, like us, uh, an alignment of interest in that they tend to both be larger co-investors in their funds that they manage and also have a stake in the management business as well. So that encourages them A, to perform and B, to stick around. We have that focus on a blend of income and capital growth. So our monthly distribution is targeting 5% and obviously a focus also on total returns over the medium to long term. The fund has beaten the ASX 200 since commencement with significantly more consistency. And finally, uh, obviously valuations right now are significantly lower than they were earlier this year. So we have seen obviously a, a big correction on the ASX, but even now as I record this, it's currently sitting around 20% below where it was in February this year. And so we think that provides a reasonably more attractive entry point than it did earlier this year. And it may be an interesting time to, uh, to add to your investments. If you'd like to know more, there's a dedicated page on our website there that you can go to to get information on the fund and a range of other stuff. Uh, you're also welcome to give us a call at any time, send us an email or put an inquiry on our website and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. If you'd like to invest, you should read the PDS and you should consult your financial advisor if you have one. If you'd like to do so, you can apply online through our website by following the Invest Now links. Uh, or you can download the application forms as well. The minimum investment in the fund is $20,000 and you can add to that from a minimum of $1,000. Importantly, we accept applications and withdrawals just monthly uh, and that generally occurs on the 25th of each month. And so you must make sure that you have your application form and your money in well before then to be guaranteed an allocation for that month. Finally, if you would like to keep in touch but you're not ready to invest just yet, we would welcome you subscribing to our Affluence News. And you can do that by just visiting the homepage of our website and putting in your email address. We send one email a month that includes our fund reports, portfolio updates and investment ideas. It also includes other things we found interesting, including profiling a few of the managers we invest with and why we like them. And of course, it's 100% free and it gives people the opportunity to hear from us regularly, but not too regularly. That's all I wanted to talk about today. I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch and to listen. Of course, if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to contact us in whichever way suits you best. And uh, I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much for your time.